also is not uh, advisable, okay? So you don't want to be floppy relaxed, nor do you want to be so rigid that the relaxation is not there. Find the middle path, okay? So, so um, you do the form and by holding, let's say for example, just a tansa, by holding the hand like this and like that, you feel it's a little bit tense. Okay, so let go of the shape a little bit and just relax into it a little bit. And then let's say here now it's become sloppy. Go back, take your spine map, reclaim the shape a little bit until you can find a position where or until you can find a state or a condition where the shapes look okay, right? They look like, you know, even my fingers are curled in, everything's mindful, but everything is relaxed as it comes out. So you can see even for a tansa, if I'm holding like this, you can see the hand shape is held, fingers are closed, but you can see how relaxed the wrist is, okay? Most people to hold a tansa, they can't do that. They would have to go floppy to, to do something like this, right? So after a while, you'll be able to maintain the shape. This, this way of thinking about TCI is so, useful for self-defense, so useful. The other way of um, TSA is not, it's still useful, but I'd rather do shadow box, or I'd rather do kickboxing than the other way of, of technique against technique. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you punch, I'll do something like that. Or if you punch, I'll, I'll do that, which is a lot of people do that. And then they follow up, you know, they go like that. And the other person stays like this, like the Yip Man movies, you know, that's not realistic against someone being dynamic. Whereas to work on getting a condition and no matter what's going on, you know, keeping that state and ultimately if you can over, you're presenting your mass, you'll be able to overwhelm the person with speed and power. Mm -hmm. Because once you can connect in that way, later on when you've got an Nimta, you'll be able to connect even without touching. In your mind, you'll be able to, it's hard to explain, but you're able to connect. So any kind of movement, and you've experienced that, you know, when you do it with juniors, you experience that. Any kind of movement, it's like you can guess what they're about to do, or you, or you know what you're about to do, not guess, but you, as soon as they're about to move, you're like, you, you can, you know, stop them um, even before they, they move, you already react. Do you know what I mean? And that's the virtue then, because like you said a minute ago, you, your center connects to my center. Yeah. So you're reading my movements from my center. Yeah. Not guessing at what I'm about to do, you're yeah. sensing it from the source. Yes. So if you can yeah. sense it from the source, there's nothing more efficient or fast than that. Yes, exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. So, so then this is what we're trying to do in our, in our single sticking hands. And ultimately, <laughs> you're trying to have it. So your first step is to be in the condition, right? Um, and the whole idea of joint rotation is that Every bone is to be moved by its joints. For example, the upper arm bone gets moved by the shoulder joint. It can't move any other way because it's connected to the shoulder joint, right? So rather than thinking, I'm, I'm just going to move my upper arm bone, you feel the whole bone from you know, the, the tip of the shoulder to the tip of the elbow, which is that whole bone. And then you start to think about, as you're um, rising up, relaxing, how to effortlessly and uh, you know, almost like it's lubricated, turn it from the spot. So you can see now Tom's shoulder is not coming forward. You know, some people punch like this, whereas his one is turning right on that spot. So the, the um, pivot point where it's rotating it around is the center of that joint. So it would be right here, you know, so it's turning from right there rather than something like this, right? Now that's a shoulder joint. Now the elbow joint has, has, you know, two, the elbow joint actually has two joints. The elbow joint is um, made of two joints. One of them is the, if I just have your arm here, one of them is a hinge joint, yeah, so it just goes up and down like that. The other one is a pivot joint, so to get that triangulation, that pyramid shape thing, right? Mm -hmm. Compared to if you go to do what you, yeah, compared to that. You can see the difference. Now that can have, because it's coming straight out of your, your heart, your, your center, and everything can have, yeah, in terms of physics, that if the path is this way, then it will have the converging of the, of the, it's the center of the pyramid line, that's, right? Yeah. Whereas if it's going like that, it doesn't, it's very hard to... It's getting lost. It's therefore, it's very hard for you to converge everything. Yeah. It's very hard for you to get the triangulation if you're doing something. Right. Because there, this gives me a nice, as you turn, Lawrence, it gives me a nice uh, twisting uh, power, twisting ability, okay? So it really tests his twisting force. So that's one way you can test this. Another way you can test it is as you're, as you're doing that movement. And I recommend this type of testing where if the person is moving, you test their alignment. So if you do it one more time, so on center line, and test, and as you do that, I'll push into him, right? Because usually, sometimes, uh, usually, <laughs> I would say, we think about the local area. So hey, his mind must have been on this, right? And when your mind's on this, you forget about 
the previous joints or maybe that state because you're, you get, you know, your mind is just on one joint, one localized area. Whereas if now he knows I want to do that as I push in, then there's no way I'm going to be able to, uh, with the same amount of force, push him back. But it was interesting that I use sa that same force, he bounced back because his mind wasn't in what he's doing there. So this type of uh, you know, testing, pushing into his structure, even though he's moving here, it gives him uh, the sort of feedback that he needs to be thinking through like a hose. He needs to be open all the way through here. Fingers is the last bit, last gate that it comes through, but you can't bypass this area just to think about the fingers and wrists. It has to come from there. Okay, so Hyun Seo, coming back. In this video, I want to discuss what the next thing is to focus on in your Silum Tower. Now, this is something that hopefully some of you are already feeling in your practice. And if not, then it's okay, because now we're going to start working on it. So just to recap on the things you've been working on uh, in your Silum Tower, uh, of course, first you learn the sequence and trying to move or perfect the shapes, you know, so that there's nothing sloppy going on, shapes and positions. And then we, uh, of course, started to work on Taekong and Seng, which is actually the on switch for this method. After that, we talked about how, you know, uh, Taekong and Seng has elbow force, and then we looked at precision of movement, so seeing the path of movement before actually, um, before actually moving, so the triangulation and the straight lines that we talked about. Um, and then we had the concept of joint rotation, right? So, now there's a lot of stuff, and hopefully, um, you've taken on board the concept of holistic awareness in that you are not jumping from one thing, okay, Taekwong, and then jump to elbow force, and after elbow force, oh, I'm going to rotate this joint, you know, you're not jumping, and this is, again, this is a little bit of a worry for me that, you know, I've given too many things too fast, and uh, some of you are really trying hard to apply all of it at the same time, and it's, instead of getting a, a light and relaxed state, you're getting a uh, sort of a hectic uh, state that you're thinking about too much. Hopefully that's not the case, but if it is, hopefully after this video things will start to let go a little bit and you'll come back to lightness. So, the next thing to work on is basically getting a sense of lightness in the entire body, okay? And in the arms getting a sense of almost as if they are floating, okay? So, now this isn't...